Well, today I'm gonna to give you a quick rundown on the best fixed blades that we reviewed this year for 2019. Well, hey folks, I'm actually on my first snowshoeing trek ever. Video coming soon on that. But wanted to just kick off this end of year best gear um, list. And this is gonna be the best fixed blades of 2019, the ones that I've looked at. These are for the blades that I reviewed this year of 2019. So starting January 1st, every fixed blade that I reviewed up to this point of the year, I've contemplated, considered, and made my, the best of list. Pick the best ones that I feel like I found from all those that we've tested and reviewed this year. So these are the cream of the crop. These are the best of the best that I find value in, enjoyment in, or uniqueness that make them rise above the rest. Because we reviewed some really good knives, and just because it doesn't make this list doesn't mean it's a good knife. It just means that these are the cream of the crop. And folks, as we jump into it, I'll have links for you guys over to Amazon, Blade HQ, GP Knives. We appreciate when you purchase through those. If there are any of these blades that really stand out to you that you feel like you want to purchase, we appreciate it when you purchase through those. As well as all the other you know links that we offer to you, regardless if it's to Mystery Ranch or 511 Tactical or Knock Around Sunglass Company, you know whatever they may be, uh, check those out below as well. Got lots of sick gear, and we always appreciate it when you do decide to make a gear purchase to use those hyperlinks. So with that let's go ahead and take a look at the best fixed blades of 2019. All right, we're going to kick things off with a knife that I have been really enjoying all year, and that is the Tops Knives Mohawk Hunter. Tested this out at the beginning of the year, have used it regularly throughout the entire year because of its versatility. It's a great field knife, which means that it's not like a bushcraft style knife, and it's not like a full-on tactical, like, you know, marine knife, something like that that you would take into a battle zone. It can handle both scenarios well, and it's kind of a blending of the the two. So it has more of a spear point thinner profile from edge to spine blade with a saber grind about five inches USA made 1095. Uh, and it has a great edge geometry. So it's really tough and strong and can pierce really well, but then it still has the angles to be able to do the finer cutting like a feather stick to help you start a fire, um, to make some notches and triggers, make spears, those type of things. And even open, um, you know, like uh, uh, food, you know, if you were doing some sort of game prep, it has a grind angle that it splits the, the meat rather well when I was doing food prep with it. And just overall performance, I was happy with, with that blade shape to kind of be a jack of all trades utility woods or more urban environment utility environment profile it works really well and the handle being a little bit larger still narrow but long which is good for my large size hands and i was a little concerned it might be a little clunky but it actually feels really good because of the thickness that they gave it and it uh, i can use it for a long period of time meaning without it fatiguing my hand and no, get, not giving me any hot spots or cramping and because of its pretty basic kind of broom handle profile you can hold it in different grips and it's not going to cause any hot spots but still give you good traction for heavier harder use and then it comes with a kydex sheath which i prefer but if you like leather uh, tops has their aftermarket leather sheaths for about 30 to 40 bucks and it will fit inside those as well so it's kind of a, a, a regardless of how you prefer to carry your blade there are options for that without having to go and make you know a huge custom leather order or kydex order and between 115 and 120 price point wise you're getting a great usa made knife with micarta and kydex and then for about 30 40 dollars more you could go leather if you want uh, and there's a, a it's a great performer for kind of a do everything lighter weight field knife i think it's a perfect blade to start this list off because it's been an awesome and one of the best fixed blades for 2019. so what happens when you're looking for a bushcraft knife and you don't want to spend the money of say like a mora garberg and high carbon but you want something with a little better sheath a little bit better um uh, designing than say a more heavy duty companion at around 20 bucks. You, you're looking for something in the middle. It's kind of tricky. It's hard to find that sometimes. And this year Condor released the Pterosaur designed by Joe Flowers. Uh, this is a design that he's been working on for quite a while. Uh, and this, I believe hits this beautiful sweet spot of about 40 to $45. You're getting a 1095 high carbon steel blade, Scandi ground. You're getting a full tank construction, but still 
keeping it rather lightweight and thin at uh, just around an eighth of an inch thick, about a four inch blade. You're getting polymer handle scales or handle uh, design with the, the full tang running through it. Uh, you're getting a really good polymer sheath that's ambidextrous with a little dangle option uh, and just really, really well designed. 90 degree spine, uh, lanyard hole. I mean, it, it's basically everything that a, like a more heavy duty companion is, but with all the upgrades that you would have to either modify or custom do yourself and spend at least that much, if not more. And it's basically everything that the Mora Garberg is just uh, slightly less fit and finish. The Mora Garberg you will, you'll discover in the video that we did has better uh, fit and finish overall and some more sheath options that are out there. Uh, so that that's something to consider. The grinding was slightly off on one little side of the uh, pterosaur, which was easily fixed. Um, the lanyard hole with the polymer is kind of uh, a little goofy. You got to really push the lanyard through uh, just because the polymer wasn't fully uh, molded around the lanyard hole properly. So there's a little bit of quality control that you lose compared to a more Garberg, but it's almost the exact same performance and everything else that I'm seeing. And definitely in many ways outperforms your more uh, um, heavy duty companion because of the 90 degree spine, because of the lanyard hole, because of the upgraded sheath. So, uh, and arguably, even though at that size, you're not gonna be beating the heck out of them. Um, the full tang does arguably give it more strength though you can stick a heavy duty companion in a tree and stand on it it's not going to break so i think it's this amazing sweet spot for just about 20 dollars more than a heavy duty companion you're getting a lot of knife and definitely has to make this list because it's a great little bushcraft blade uh, for under 50 bucks that will do a lot of work and give you a lot of features that is an in-between um, area that mora doesn't always hit Next up, this knife I've been really digging. If you're looking for premium and almost like mid-tech level blades, if not mid-tech level, uh, the Guardian knives from Bradford in general are awesome, but particularly this Guardian 5.5, I was super pumped with. I took it on a multi-day backpacking trip as my belt knife, and I loved it. I think it's a great hiker knife, backpacker knife, because it's lightweight, uh, coming in, I think at around like seven and a half to eight ounces, uh, but you're getting, you know, a five inch blade, you're getting a CPM 3V steel, which is a phenomenal steel, love that steel. You're, there are all kinds of different washes and coatings on it. The fit and finish is always superb on every Bradford, and I've probably had six Bradford knives over the years. Uh, with it, the high saber grind, I think you can get some full flats to give you different options. So you're getting kind of like a medium sized blade, but really lightweight. So you're able to cut down on ounces. And then the handle ergonomics are a dream. They're so comfy. There are no hot spots. There, there's lots of good palm swelling. There's even some traction on those G10. And I think they have some micarta versions out there as well that just feels great in the hand so you can use it for a long period of time and it's not going to cause any sort of hot spots or problems and it's a more um nat generic i will say a uh, profile compared to the guardian um, line that doesn't have the 0.5 after it. Basically the 0.5s are more of a, a generic knife design. And then like the Guardian th uh, um, 4, the Guardian 5, the Guardian 6, the, those type of knives have their designated finger choil, which is very unique to Bradford knives, which are great blades, but they're more designed for a particular type of grip. This has a more natural profile for uh, those people who prefer that. And so I think it hits a great, great um, performance level. Now this is going to run about at 260. So, you know, it's, uh, definitely on the higher end of prices that, uh, you may be looking at in knives, but I think for the three V the fit and finish, uh, the designing, the ergonomics, it's really, really good. Now, the only drawback that I saw with this is that the stock leather sheath had very low edge, uh, sorry, not edge retention, but retention of the knife itself. It just wants to fall right out um, and just doesn't really retain the blade very well. There are Kydex options on the Bradford website for around 40 extra dollars. So it really, in my opinion, if you're gonna go with it, you're gonna wanna upgrade to either a custom leather or their Kydex that are available. So that puts it right around $300 so it's just something to consider there but uh the knife itself really really performs well and is a is one of the best blades that i used this year and was a dream when on our hiking and backpacking trips that we did and particularly that overnight um, multi-day backpacking trip it would be perfect for people looking for a fixed blade that do that on a regular basis next up is a knife that i was not even expecting this year but i believe 
having owned, I think, five versions, four or five versions of the Cold Steel SRK. I believe that this to date is the pinnacle of not only material, but design for me and what I look for in the 3V version of the Cold Steel SRK. Now, the SRK is, you know, synonymous with knives and outdoor stuff and it's been around for so long uh, designs have been issued to navy seals in the past it definitely is uh, more of like a utility um, field knife absolutely this one though coming with 3v steel great premium steel having that saber grind good thick tip on it um, so it's going to be tough and durable and 3v is a very uh, good um, resilient steel. These are made in Italy, actually, which is uh, interesting. So that's kind of cool because most cold steels are either made in uh, Taiwan or they have a few that are made in the U.S. So Italian made uh, steel. And what makes it a little bit different for me on top of it, just having a premium steel, good saber grind, good strength on the tip, is that they have brought in the edge closer to the handle guard and removed that one inch ricasso on that was on the older versions, which are was fine. But you basically, if you're going to do finer work you had to use it and you kind of wanted to choke up on it and it wasn't really a choil it was ricasso and it and it just limited some of the finer work of the knife that i believe now with the edge coming closer to the handle removing that one inch um uh, Ricasso has made it more user friendly. You can just get right there on that guard and go to town on finer carving and feather stick making and notching. And it's, it's more user friendly without feeling like you have to choke up on the blade. So I really like that. You got your polymer sheath that works really well. And right around $150, you're getting a premium steel, great handle ergonomics. You're getting that polymer sheath. And it's just an overall amazing package that they've fine tuned over the years that I feel it just hits so many sweet spots if you like the design and you prefer field knives this is an awesome awesome option and definitely has to make this list next up is a knife that's got such a cool profile it has to make the list because I, I gravitate to it and it's a performer as well uh, this year we discovered the work tough gear brand uh, and I purchased the Lanzetta, which is a really unique blade. It's got a recurve, big belly. Uh, it's about f uh, eight inches, really well balanced, under a pound. Uh, comes with a Japanese uh, SK85, which is basically like an SK5, but uh, differentially heat treated from 56 to 58. It's got good edge retention. It's tough. It's durable. And it's got like a wicked like Spartan blade look to it. Uh, and has great, great handle ergonomics, really feels well in the hand, good in the hand and is really well balanced. And then comes with a Kydex sheath standard. And this thing's like around $130. So uh, for what you're paying for, you're getting tough durability. Um, it's got a really cool profile to it in, in my collection because I have so many different blades from, that oftentimes they kind of look very similar. This looks different, but still performs really well. And you get really a sick, well-balanced blade that you don't feel on your belt if you're doing a day hike, but can do some pretty decent hacking and chopping and splitting, and then still have the um, nimbleness to do fine carving and whittling and feather stick making to help you start a fire, 90 degree spine. I mean, it's sick. And if, if this profile is a little too crazy for you, they have lots of other uh, designs now that they either use their um, uh, SK85 steel, or they even do, I believe it's K110, which is like a more premium um, version of D2, basically. It, it, it has a, a little bit better, and I think it has more uh, Valladium in it. Uh, so that's another option that they have for more um, generic styles uh, of blade. This one was just so unique and performed for me, it had to make this list. Last, but absolutely not least, this year I picked up my very first Winkler knife. And it was designed by Jason Knight, a really well-known knife designer. And so what you get is an ultra premium blade uh, with definitely mid-tech, almost on the level of custom designing. Uh, and this thing is such a cool blade with this Pathfinder design. What you're getting, and there are a couple options out there, uh, but what I picked up was, uh, I believe, a walnut wood handle scale. I got this kind of smoked out um, 
I guess it's a coating, even though it's not wearing at all on it. Uh, and I mean, it looks like it came out of a forge from like 1790, you know, and now I'm going to put it on my belt and I'm going to go find paths into the wilderness as like one of the first trappers. I mean, that's the feeling of it. That's the look of it. In my opinion, the performance of it, uh, because of the, um, 80 CRV, I believe is the steel, uh, being used, which was one of the first times I've only used like one other blade with that. It held up very well, good edge retention, good shock absorption. The handle ergonomics are to die for. They just feel so good in the hand. Uh, every single little angle fits perfectly. Even the tang tapering down into the, the lanyard hole back there. So perfect balance. Uh, it's a great little belt knife. It's pretty compact at right around about four inches for the cutting edge. Great clip swedge there that just looks amazing. The only drawback was if you want to do a lot of really fine like notch making and you want to put a lot of pressure up on the spine, that's an almost sharpened spine. Just It's just slightly dulled. Uh, so you, when you put a lot of pressure on there, you definitely feel it. And it's kind of uncomfortable on your thumb. So you got to gotta choke back near that jimping. It's doable. It's That's the only area where I saw a drawback is if you do a lot of notching with your with your fixed blades and you like to put a lot of pressure near the tip uh, of the blade on the back of the spine this isn't really designed for that it's not super comfortable um, to do that that was the only drawback but uh, amazing leather sheath with a kydex liner in it so it's basically kydex with a leather overmold basically ambidextrous fits so well in there i mean it's a, it's a beautiful package but you're going to pay for it at almost 400 dollars. i think i paid like 380 for it uh it's a pretty penny. So you got to have the money and you've got to either like the design and or um, love the uh, materials. You're just like, I got to have those materials and you want a Winkler or you want a, a Jason knife uh, Knight designed knife and you can't afford like a full custom. This is a great kind of entry level into that. So you'll pay for it, but man is the fit and finish, the quality, the designing to die for it is, it is amazing and absolutely puts the, this list over the top as my favorite this year knife that I tested for overall, um, designing material, uh, just feel and, um, capability, man, this thing is amazing. And, makes the list and tops out our list. Well guys, there you have it. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Just giving you an idea for the best fixed blades that I've seen this year that I've really enjoyed, that have really performed well for me and I could recommend to anybody. And I think you'd get a lifetime of fun and enjoyment and use out of those blades. So check us out on Instagram, Facebook, all the social media. You guys know the drill. Appreciate all of you. Subscribe if you're not a current subscriber. Uh, and stay tuned for the next video. We got a couple more of the best ofs coming. Best gear. Uh, best pocket knives, and the worst gear list that is also coming real soon. So always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. We'll see you out there.